Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have radio broadcaster at KVMR, the host of Word in Edgewise, Tom Wolf. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thank Welcome you. back after it's been a, a, a many-year absence. Yeah, it has it's been to see you back from uh, from Auburn. And also, we have uh, Cheryl Blychester, who is, and I've got you got a, you got a lot of titles here. You are the you're a consulting engineer to start with, uh, on the board of the UC Berkeley Center for Catastrophic Risk Management, uh, on the uh, committee for readiness and. Uh, a, a safety assessor for the Office of Emergency Services. Did I get all that right? Yes. Close? <laughs> yes, and that's just so that I can talk about the PG&E outage. Oh, gotcha. Let's talk, talk about it. Tell me about the, okay, let me tell you about the PG&E outage. Right. My, my brother and both of my brothers and their wives and all the nieces and nephews came to California a couple of weeks ago and we went to Napa to taste wine. They turned the electricity off wow. uh, where we were there. <laughs> Luckily, we were there in the morning, and they were able to c continue our tour by candlelight uh, in, in, in the wine cave. Huh, but right. other people who had a tour scheduled for the afternoon were out of luck. Right. They were, they were, I think they were upset. Yeah. But <laughs> forest they, fires were averted, correct? Right, no. No. <laughs> Not necessarily. There's no real evidence that that would have started a forest fire, and there's lots of different ways to avoid this arcing. Uh, scenario, one of the things is that to maintain our forest a little bit better, mm -hmm. right? And to maintain our, whereas PG&E's problem was with a specific line arcing and starting a fire, the fact that it spread across all of California practically was, you know, Cal Fire's mm -hmm. problem and our, and our forest management problem. It wasn't really PG&E's problem, you know, not all the multi-million dollars worth of it. It was the conditions, and those conditions weren't created by PG&E. Right. What I think the money that they're trying to sue them for should be used for is putting all those lines that are in a high wind corridor where this could really happen, putting all those lines underground. Yeah. Because where there are really high wind uh, corridors and real danger of high wind, the lines are underground. Right. That's and the logical thing to do. Exactly. But that would mean PG&E taking it on themselves. Instead, they pass right. it on to us with this. Uh, it's a weird. It seems like a weird political pressure yeah. ploy. We're going to cut off your power for a couple days. Well, because, and you're right. Uh, because we because can. <laughs> you can't. Um, you can't separate the fact that PG&E is definitely self-interested in shutting off the power. Right. There, it's it's not. They're trying to avoid liability. Exactly. Right. Yeah. They're going to pick the fire uh, avoidance method that best helps them. But if you think about it, if you have high, high dry conditions and high winds going yeah. along with it, the last thing you want is to cut off power to everybody, and then have everybody light fires in their fireplaces to keep warm. <laughs> Right, and then wow. you have the high winds and the smoke coming out, and and then you also not be able to charge their electric cars to make a fast getaway. Mm -hmm. Oh well, never mind that. They don't have they don't have power to their wells. They don't right. have water pressure to right. put out a fire if one starts. Even the water districts didn't have water pressure. A lot of the water districts had to go to rationing, you know, to this two gallon or whatever a day rationing during the emergency. You know, they created an emergency, mm -hmm. and they didn't do enough consequence analysis to really figure out. What, what the consequences were going to be beyond the fact that they believed they were saving people from fires. Well, it's a much easier, it's a much easier solution calculus for them than actually, actually, actually figuring putting out. their lines under, underground. Well, so it's, it's a short-term uh, uh, convenient solution to a, a long-term term problem. problem. Yeah. One uh, facet of which is I should put the lines underground. And the second facet, which you alluded to earlier, which is, Hey, this is not a PG and E problem. That brush has been allowed to grow. Right. That timber is not allowed to be harvested. That we have all of this uh, dry uh, underbrush available to be burned right. at the uh, the slightest spark. That's been very damaged by the droughts over many many years, and so and, that, that and that's something that, that you better. can lay directly to the hands of, of, a, of, of a lot the of the more you know, of, the, of state. the state goaded by radical right. environmentalists, right. environmentalists right. who yeah, don't want true. to cut down any trees. That's true. It could be a lot more uh, evenly managed, and then. And then the other problem, really, their real problem was, because I don't have a problem with them shutting down the power if they do so in a way that really informs people that they're going to do it. But the clue that they didn't inform people well enough was that there wasn't a run on generators. There wasn't a run no. on block ice or dry ice, you know, ahead of it. There wasn't anybody running to get gas to fill their generators or anything else that you would expect, batteries and everything else. 
that you hear about when there's going to be a hurricane and they have two days warning and there's going to be a hurricane and there's a run on, you know, Home Depot is emptied out. None of that happened right. before this, which tells you right away that they didn't inform people well I, enough. I remember well, to, to, be, to be fair, I mean, how, how much of a, uh, how far in the forecast were the high winds forecast? 48 hours, they knew yeah. 48 oh, okay. hours. And so they, they had, and they... They weren't they, saying this might happen. I'd been hearing that, yeah. this might happen, but that's all I ever heard, and then I was hearing that power's out. So there's two different stages of being prepared, and I think most people who live <clears> in <throat> rural areas are, most people are prepared, maybe not everybody. But there's the stage of preparedness where you have a generator, and there's the other stage of preparedness where you're at work, and right. you need to get back to start your generator, but mm -hmm. you're not there, and and you don't know when you need to unplug all of your devices because oh, the power surge is actually going on. to be going to be happening. Yeah, you know, so you need to know that they're going to be surging the power. I think I think the, the the larger issue though it can be explained as a tragedy of the commons. If you take a look at a map uh, of where the fires took place and figure out which fires took place on publicly owned uh, uh, land, whether right. it's a forest, uh, it's a National right. Forest Service or state forest land or whatever, parks and so forth, as opposed to privately managed timberland, mm -hmm. there wasn't any fire taking place on that no, privately private, managed timberland exactly. because privately managed, privately owned people take care right. to make sure the that they don't put their property at risk, whereas the public the government, they don't. They they so simply it's, it's a tragedy of the commons. Everybody a, yeah. everybody wants to go hiking, but nobody wants to take care of the resource. Huh. And the interesting thing about it is that it's free enterprise. This this drive to make money at what you're doing and not have your resources ruined is driving the private sector to to keep to manage their resources. Right. And the public sector doesn't have that incentive. There isn't an incentive. Yeah. Have that incentive. Private, pro no private property in forest resources would eliminate most. If not all, well, not all. You can't get rid of all yeah, forest fires, but, but a huge certainly would, would 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 mitigate the spread right. that we're seeing. Sure. Uh, in, but we in can't these gloss over, over PG&E's responsibility. No, no, right, no, true, no. true. And they and they did try. And the really good news about this whole thing is that they they're getting together in a task force with the Office of Emergency Services and with Cal Fire, mm -hmm. and and they're going to work out. Hopefully, they're going to work out the kinks so that the next time they do it, they do much better notification. Mm -hmm. We actually hear the weather alerts on the on the broadcast stations on the KFBKs and other and mm. television stations that are designated for emergency notification we actually hear those on that which so far they've had it just being on news reports which people are half listening to you know it's the Santa Ana winds is that what they no, call that's it? the Southern California, that's Southern California. Oh, okay yeah, that's Our, a different. ours were uh, they you know they were coming in I think from the north and they were they were blowing really well but um but uh, the other thing that was frustrating was that they really didn't get up to the wind, wind levels that were red flagged. Mm -hmm. That was not PG&E's fault. That was the weather forecast. Oh, really? But okay. then in trying to uh, no, that's defend a weather, it, that's the weather's fault. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and the, and the, but in didn't trying to defend to it, PG&E called out that, well, it was going at 120 miles per hour at Kirkwood, but Kirkwood isn't in... Kirkwood has their own utility. They don't, they're not even in PG&E's district, huh. so why even talk about it, what was going on up there? It was wow. funny. I don't uh, know. That's just now, a now hot that we, potato. Now that we've uh, yeah. they, you criticized California and their forest management, let's move <laughs> to the federal level and, and, and talk a little bit about uh, the Department of Health and Human Services, where, where a memo has been circulating, it mm. turns out, leaked by the New York Times. Memo has been circulating since last April that they're going to solve all of these Title IX problems by making a very simple change. They will now uh, change the definition of sex to male or female uh, as determined, male or female, as determined at birth or, or yeah. even before, uh, with no other uh, determination, none of the tran none of, no, no transgender, no... Or uh, any other any natural Any other gender. Uh, and it's going to be a government-mandated determination. So if, the, wow. if your birth oh, certificate... Oh, that always works. Yeah. If the birth certificate <laughs> says you are a male, and you don't want to be a male, tough luck. You are a male and you are stuck with it, likewise for females. So, so um, it, it, it ignores medical science. Right. It ignores that there are- Well, and it ignores liberty. Yeah. Well, How about that? Two levels, two <laughs> levels of what's wrong here. The first yeah. thing is it ignores medical science. Yeah. There are 16 different conditions, ranging from uh, Kleinfelder syndrome, adrenal hyperplasia, mm -hmm. uh, gonadal dysgenesis, uh, the XXY chromosome, right. Oh, right. and about 13 or 14 other 
conditions, medically defined but, conditions that well, are gender, different other, are, other than, of, other of than where straight you male fall. or female. Yeah. Well, and never mind the Kinsey scale of where everybody falls in their sexual inclination. Right. Everybody right. has a little bit of each, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, so, okay, so that's, that's the, the medical and the scientific problem. Right. And, and you mentioned the liberty problem. Right. Yeah. Why should the government say... Why is it involved? Why should anybody other than the individual involved say this is the gender that I, yeah. want, that I, I identify? with, whatever it is. Here, here's my take. I think that the, um, the problem really is a language problem. Hmm. If, if we had a language where we didn't differentiate between male and female, this would not be a problem. More, <laughs> more the, the pronoun issue. If the, the pronoun, pronoun yeah, it's a pronoun, that, pronoun that's issue. That's the thing that comes up. Yeah. But I, I, I would like to know, what, do you, what are your thoughts, either of you, why this is happening? What is, uh, what are they trying to accomplish? Well, this? it goes back to the, uh, you know, to the red meat issue of, uh, 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 unisex bathrooms so back, in, back in North Carolina. Really so that, that's one, that. That's, there's that. And I don't it's, think it's just that. I it's think not that's just the that. tip of the what iceberg it, of what it is. What it is, is it's, it's one of those uh, raw meat yeah. conservative things that this you can old. wave in front of people to get them fired up. Sort of like abortion or sort of like uh, the immigrants are coming, which we'll talk about later. It's one of those raw meat emotional issues that really doesn't affect, it doesn't affect more I mean, that's, it than doesn't even... perhaps one in a hundred. And the people that yeah. are affected by and it the, aren't the ones that are calling yeah, and for people it. That are, well, yeah, and the, people, and, the, and the 99 out of 100 who are not affected at mm -hmm. all are the ones that are getting uh, wrapped around the axle. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a raw meat emotional political issue. Getting back to the pronoun issue, though, is mm -hmm. that is that the government is supposed to be blind to gender. Right. And so it should be blind to it, all the issues right. around gender. You are a citizen. Right, you In are a citizen. Law, you're just a so citizen. maybe they should just call it citizen and they should call it cis somebody or cis, huh. you know. Well, they have, there is, That's I've, a, I've been reading about different kinds of uh, no, but uh, the government gender only, neutral. Uh, everybody else can say whatever they want and, and demand right. whatever they want of right. every, anybody else. And, and, whether, and, not and everyone it, yeah. can not go and along with it or not. Right. And yeah. Well, as, a, as an old and privileged <laughs> uh, male white guy yeah. uh, who doesn't have to worry about any of this stuff, I do worry about it because sure. if they can go after. There's a there's a poem. The first they came yeah. for the for the uh, uh, the trade unionists. Right. And I didn't stick up for them. And, I was not a trade yeah, unionist. And then they came for the Jews and so right. on. And finally they came for me, and there was nobody left to right. defend me. So we have right. to defend uh, everyone, everybody's freedoms, everybody's yeah. liberals, as liberties. As long as somebody is doing something that suits suits them and, and it's not harming and it's not harming anybody else, anybody else which. Gender and identity we, doesn't. And we have to move the government towards towards this bias neutral, you know, towards this yeah. idea. So if you don't if you don't allow the government to use any gender identification, mm -hmm. no no writing down male or female on any application forms or anything yeah. else, no gender identification, no race identification, none of that to the government. You, the yeah. government has to be blind to that. You're just looking at yeah. yeah. Well, it, it takes away the opportunity to identify yourself as a victim class to go for. Special benefits mm -hmm. well, because true. you're you're a member of a specific class. If, if you're if there are no classes, mm -hmm. there are no class. Uh, dis there, there is no class discrimination. I'm going to say that poem. You were I don't even remember who wrote it, but uh, I saw a, a shorter, more recent version of the. It was first they came for the journalists, but I said nothing because <laughs> I'm not a journalist, and we have no idea what happened after. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to our next right. topic: right. the That's killing right. of Jamal Khashoggi. Yeah, uh, they're, they're finally uh, admitting the Saudis are finally admitting that they indeed did yeah. uh, kill the guy. Oops. They're not admitting that they probably chopped him up into little pieces and hauled him out. But uh, they said they killed him right when he walked in the door. Now wow. they're saying that. Wow. Well, it's, I haven't heard the, that. The, yeah. yeah. The 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 uh, admissions keep getting uh, more, and more and more specific. <laughs> But, but it was still not. Are they still claiming it was not officially sanctioned by the prince? Probably, yeah. Yes. Some yeah. rogue outfit yeah, or whatever. Yeah, the, yes. yeah, the the rogue lieutenant to the prince. Right. I guess. Oh, right. yeah. Just uh, anyway, the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. He was a actually a, a, a quite a, a good writer. He was a journalist mm -hmm. for the uh, Washington Post. Mm -hmm. uh, the last uh, like twenty years uh, or something. Uh, yeah, the, the last column that he wrote, which was posthumous was something about we need to have more free speech in huh. the Arab world. Yeah. And that precisely, I think, is what the uh, wow. Saudi royals had absolutely no time for. They did not want anybody yeah. uh, f speaking freely about what goes on in the Saudi uh, kingdom. Cool. It's interesting, uh, the, uh, the, the new uh, prince, uh, who, I forget his name, uh, uh, Alman, uh, Alman, yeah, Salmon, Salmon, Sal Sal Salmon, uh, is a guy that is a uh, young guy, and he, first, one of the first things he did, he said, "Hey, I'm a liberal guy. I'm a nice guy. I'm going to let women drive." Right, right. 
Yeah. Whoop de doo. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not. We'll still flog them to death right. if they commit adultery, and we'll right. still. We don't want to go crazy. Yeah, yeah. we'll stone them, We're and we'll go overboard you know, with our liberals. You know, and we'll still kill anybody that renounces Islam. But. Yeah. We're going to let women drive. So everybody, you know, he's, you know, charm offensive. Mm -hmm. The thing is, nothing has changed in, in the uh, wasabi, uh, you know, uh, radically Islam uh, culture. I think it's wahhabi. Wahhabis. Wasabi is the stuff you put on sushi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, in any case, nothing, is, nothing has really yeah. changed. And, uh, and it comes but, at this but, mm. but nevertheless, Saudi Arabia is our ally, don't you know? Uh -huh. Right. And we want yeah. to encourage them to do more, more. Uh, progressive things because progressive for them is bringing them into the 19th century. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Exactly. Let's let's take a yeah. look at, at at the history of that alliance mm -hmm. because it's a really interesting history. In 1971, President Nixon, may he may he burn in hell forever, <laughs> took us off the gold standard. Right. He right. He, he, right. he cut ties. It had to on be a Republican. A Democrat could not have gotten away with he that. He took it us off the gold Republican. gold standard entirely. And as a result, we had rip roaring inflation that mm -hmm. started in the 70s and right. went, you know, went up to the Volcker era in, in, in the 80s. Almost yeah. 20%. And so, harder. as a result of that, he said, you know, what we need to do is we need to figure out something besides gold. We can't go back to the gold standard because then we can't finance both right. guns and butter, both the yeah. war in Vietnam right. plus all these social programs we want, yeah. we want to continue. Guns and butter, yeah. <laughs> so, what we'll do is we will make a deal. He, he, he dispatched Henry Kissinger. Another guy who should rest in a warm yeah. place to uh, Saudi Arabia to say, I got a deal for you. I got a deal you can't refuse. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. We will have your back. We will defend the Saudi monarchy against all uh, enemies, domestic mm -hmm. and foreign. All you have to do is price oil in dollars. Mm -hmm. Don't ah. price it in yuan. Don't price it in uh, was the 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 European dollar. currencies back yeah. those, those pre-euro days. Don't, uh, you know, price it in yen, nothing else, no rubles. All oil has to be sold in dollars. What does that mean? It means that if anybody wants to buy oil, and, and keep in mind that back then, as still, Saudi Arabia was the major oil producer yeah. in the world. So if China or if Ecuador or if any other country in the world wanted to buy Saudi Soviet oil, Union. they had to get dollars first, putting a, a floor under the value of dollars mm -hmm. uh, and checking the inflation. Wow. That was, that was the, that, that's, that's the story. kind of genius. And that's continued. <laughs> <laughs> and that's continued Evil until genius, this day. It's... Well, we, but we made a deal with the devil. Yeah, it's a, it's a Faustian yeah. bargain right. because we really? are we are making a deal with a with a uh, a medieval monarchy yeah. that is still fighting a millennia old war yeah. between Sunni and Shia. Right. I mean the the, Civil the war. Saudis internal war. Yeah, well, absolutely. In, in the Arab world, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saudis are Sunni. The Iranians are Shia. Mm -hmm. We have a proxy war going on in Yemen. The wars oh. between is ah. between the Shias and the uh, Sunnis in Yemen, but it's a proxy war in effect between Iran and Saudi yeah. Arabia for hegemony, hegemony over the over the uh, over the Arab world. Like yeah. the other the, the stuff the U.S. and USSR used to get into and back in the day. We right. are you know since we don't like Iran for you know whatever reason, we are siding with again with the Saudis in a war in mm -hmm. Yemen, which has killed yeah. something like fifty thousand yeah, uh, innocent civilians, starving them to death for the most part. Now we that mourn. That doesn't support our values. Oh, not, not we at mourn, all. in any way. We mourn the death of Khashoggi, and we should. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think it was a, a, one of the so Lenin or Stalin or one of those guys that said, if one person dies, it's a, it's a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. If 50,000 people die, it's a statistic. Right. And 50,000 Yemenis, Yemenis have died in that civil in this war, proxy war. In this proxy war, really. It's a lot harder to wrap your head around and 50, people. And that's a lot people. bigger, that's, oh, yeah. that's a 50,000 times bigger tragedy right. than one journalist dying, right. even though we don't want to see anybody die. And, and it would be one thing if Khashoggi was, the incident of Chicago was bringing up the whole discussion, but it's not. It's bringing there. up a discussion very limited very on whether limited. or not we should what we should do to you yeah. know slap to the fingers on, slap the fingers on this one issue not, on this one, not yeah. the overall the, overall, the overall issue which is issue. we are an ally with a murderous regime that's being swept under the rug by yeah. both democrats and republicans well Nobody. not all republicans Rand paul has uh, a few Rand yeah, paul, paul is standing uh, up uh, massive good on him he's sometimes right i wish he was more often right i wish he was a little more <laughs> like his dad but yeah. uh he is one of the few voices um yeah tom massey Rand that's, paul maybe a couple others yeah I don't know of anybody on the that Democratic side. I don't know if anybody on any Democrats are. I, don't, I haven't heard of any, uh, and that's that's shameful. Democrats yeah. for sure should be saying 
why are we allying ourselves with a, a anti-feminist, anti, you know, anti-human, uh, anti-human regime like like the the royal family, but like this the monarchs? Human rights, yeah, a human that rights record that's awful. That's awful. Yeah. I, I got to say, even though I, I get your point about fifty thousand versus one guy, the, but the one, it's not that he is himself so important. It's that at this time, right now, when our president is talking a lot of very slightly violent language about the media and about how they're the enemy of the people and there's this kind of atmosphere during this atmosphere there's a government that took one of their media people out just took them out yeah and, and it's interesting but I'm and sure that happens that happens it a lot in does. that part of the world and also about, in in uh, the but former Soviet Union. Of course it did. Of course, you know? in in terrible countries, in right. terrible in countries, terrible countries and our country is supposed. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to be the opposite of all of that. And our president, first, we well, didn't even really want to address it, and then he was saying, yeah. "Well, he, he did he it believes, for a long time. He believes yeah. the rogue story. He said he believes oh. what." Uh, he, he said it was believable. Believable. Yeah. I, I, he did. He me, did it for it, way too long. But, this and, was the. This was the, the triggering other side of that. Is that I am pretty sure this wouldn't have gotten any attention at all if it wasn't journalists talking about one of their own. Well, of course. You know, but if it weren't if journalists talking, if this was an engineer talking, over there, they wouldn't have been talking about this at all. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe well, I mean, it's <laughs> significant that he was working for the Washington Post. Yeah. Right. And that's not exactly. Uh, uh, you know, that's not exactly Trump's favorite newspaper. No. Sort of how many the, how many of these uh, how many people have walked into that embassy and never come out again? I don't know. That weren't journalists. Yeah, I have no idea. We have I've never paid. No any one has any ideas that. because right. the journalists won't pay attention to that. What's interesting <laughs> is that the, the Turks obviously have a pretty good uh, espionage. Oh yeah, right. Uh, I'd be looking for in, bugs in the, in the in the Turkish embassy because they and seem you, to know everything that went on, from all, right. you know, yeah. all, from the bones uh, on. And you got to know that if it's in the Saudi embassy, it's in. Every embassy. Right. That's, that's not that's not a one-off thing. <laughs> well, I hope we're not doing that in our. Well, there's yeah, right. Oh, of, course, of course, yeah, of course, we were never doing, never doing anything like that. Reporters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, moving from from uh, shooting wars in <clears throat> Yemen and uh, and Turkey to vaping wars <laughs> here in the United States, the FDA <laughs> wants to start a war on vaping because yeah. don't you know, vaping and e-cigs. While not as bad as smoking actual cigarettes and cigars and such, they, they might be precursors. Or they might be gateway drugs. I don't know. What is it that the, the FDA thinks this is such oh, a big deal? Oh, it's about the marketing. About the marketing with flavors and the stuff. The flavors they think and marketing, it, to marketing to teenagers children or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I. That's what I understand. Great flavored vaping and stuff. But, but here, here I am. I've never smoked. I, I'm not a smoker. I can't handle it. Just breathing in, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and even so, I was never against you know, this secondhand smoke, banning it or anything else. Mm. If the government is subsidizing the growth of tobacco, then take responsibility for right. it, you know. One yeah, way, which is still going on. Right, yeah. one way or another. Either either stop subsidizing well, that, it and have that a should ban happen on no it. matter what. I and, think. But you know what I mean, don't, crop, don't have yeah. it both ways. It's just yeah. to, to um, diametrically opposed messages. But then they told us that it was the secondhand smoke that gave them the right to ban because, ci cigarettes because it was harming people yeah. who were not smoking. But then they I can see then, a libertarian angle on that. Let's come yeah, back right. to it. Put a pin but in then that. They, but then they go to uh, to vaping, which is supposedly not causing. And it's a lot heavier. You don't get yeah. a lot of second like with actual smoke. Yeah, it does right. fill the room. Vape, if you look vaping at it, vaping just it's hangs thick right there. and heavy, and it goes whoa to and the it, ground. And there's not there's not that second hand. So then, right. what is their right to stop somebody from abusing themselves? The narrative, which is that if you <laughs> start out vaping as a I don't know 15 year old, you'll automatically graduate to uh, uh, tobacco and then to marijuana and well, then to tobacco. crack cocaine. Even when they're vaping, they're still vaping tobacco. Yeah. Okay, but I'm not sure what but they're it's, vaping. It's, it's, I, I, or it's I, tobacco um, oil. It's nicotine oil, so it's, yeah, it's the yeah. same product. Whatever. Uh, the point is, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more healthy for uh, it people is to less use damaging. vaping than, yeah. than it is to uh, inhale the tars that are in uh, Pall Mall. Yeah, and, and you and gotta wonder you... how many uh, actual like cigarette com companies, are, you know, companies that, are, that have a vested interest in it are really wanna see vaping go away. Maybe they'd like or, to or, see Or buy a, uh, an interest in it, which or, I'm sure yeah, and, that's and, the and, other, and, the other and, option. I don't think they care. And then the the FDA, it's the FDA that's trying to ban it. I'm not sure where they come in. Are on they this. actually banning? I, well, that I hadn't trying, trying to regulate trying out of existence. Regulate it out okay. of existence, right? Which is Same equivalent, thing. right? But but I don't know why it's the FDA because if you look at what they're trying to do, they're trying to get into the issues of making the battery safer and things like that. Yeah. I'm thinking that that's a consumer affairs issue. 
Not, sure. not an FDA is issue. That, is that a well, question at least, of batteries? At least, at least we know, at least, I mean, the, the FDA is battling vaping. Yeah. But at least we know they're doing a really, really good job about keeping opiates off the market. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us about sufentanil. Sufentanil, yeah, that's a new, the new one. I, I, it's just yet, yet another um, FDA approved. Uh, approved? Not yet. Wait. Oh, okay. They're, 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 they're talking preliminary about approval. Approval. the preliminary approval. Okay, but okay. it will, eventually will be. Really, yeah. is there any? So yeah. I'll take bets. Okay. <laughs> it's going and to be. There's a, a lot invested in it. It's this, not going this anywhere. Is, this is five or ten times more potent than fentanyl, right? Which is worse than oxycontin, right? right. Which right. is worse than heroin. Which is right. yeah. It's which essentially is, which, what? Right. Yeah. What? And, and this what? has been the process. I mean, heroin was invented to get people allegedly to be an easier version of just straight up opium, opiate, opium use. Right. And, uh, and then it turned out to be super addictive, so they keep coming up with these other things that are more uh, acceptable, and you don't picture a junkie in an alleyway shooting up, but you're still doing the same thing to your body and doing it more efficiently and right. more and, addi addictively. And we still have this, the, the problem is really not in the, there is a problem with the prescription drugs, but it's the problem with other people getting hold of the yeah. prescription drugs, and now you're gonna have this available right and there are naturally existing pain control yeah some of them are herbs. weeds yeah some of them are weeds <laughs> some we are we are in a good part time. of them is weed yeah, yeah exactly right. yeah. there is there is some hope i mean we're seeing this i mean where we are i don't even know what the status is in california are we entirely legal now or are we uh yeah if you buy the state uh, or a state licensed okay. uh, and we're on the way store the, uh, yeah the government has right. to always get involved but yeah. we're on culturally we are heading that but, way but the well, problem is that the federal right. government still has their laws. Well, well, so yeah, Schedule One, right. federal, yeah. Schedule, right. Schedule One, so uh, they can illegal. Still the feds can still in, you. can still swoop in and, yeah. and, and you know make life difficult yeah. uh, if they want to. Uh, and of course, Jeff Sessions wants to. Right. 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 So he's far, he's been held on in check. Record. One thing I guess that we can uh, give credit for to Trump for is he seems to have kept Jeff Sessions on a short leash mm -hmm. when it comes to going after the marijuana smokers. Do you think Trump did it? Well, I'm not sure. I, it's I, just happening. It's maybe. happening. Oh, I, no, this had to be working its way through a long, mm -hmm. a long way, I think. Yeah. Long before Trump. Do we have time to talk a little bit about contract fra fraud at Caltrans? We have one yeah. minute. One minute. Exactly one minute. One. Oh, well, a quick update. This was something I talked about maybe three years ago, that Caltrans was ordered in a writ of mandate to reevaluate a contract that, that my business partner and I had won for $2.5 million. We had should have won it. The Caltrans people committed fraud and changed the scoring hmm. uh, words in the back of it and and didn't. The judge said, Go, take it back and rescore it and do it right and rescind the contract and get your money back because the other company had been working on it. And they've done none of it. They haven't even paid our legal fees yet. Three so, years later. So, so, the, so that's the, the update. The judicial system, hard at work. Well, it's not the judge's fault. This is Caltrans. Okay. Ah. This is Caltrans. We're, they're still... That's the show. See you again next week. Same time, same place. Libertarian Counterpoint, Channel 17, Sacramento. Uh, www.accesssacramento.org on the internet at uh, 8 p.m. Thursday, noon, Friday, 4 a.m. Saturday. Also YouTube and Facebook. Thank you. We'll see you again next week.